Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Alexis Kalnan, and I work with the Land Arrangements for Air Journey. Myself and the rest of the team are excited to have you today to discover our TBM journey to Europe this coming June. You will soon hear more from our founder and CEO, Terry Pui. During this webinar, if and when you have any questions, please type them into the questions box located on the right side of your screen, and Terry will see them and answer. This webinar is being recorded, and you will be able to gain later access to it. You may also access the flyer for this journey just below the questions box located on the right side of your screen. Again, I would like to welcome you to discover our TBM journey to Europe this coming June and introduce our founder and CEO, Terry Pui. Well, very thank you very much, Alex. This is uh, Terry from Mayor Journey. I know some of you and some of you know uh, me. Let's go together and review that exciting program we have this uh, summer uh, with our TBM journey to uh, Europe. A little bit of story about what Air Journey is all about. The company was established in 1998, that's 25 years ago, and we started with small journeys to the Bahamas and since then have been extending. Our most uh, amazing journey is uh, our journey around the world which span over 70 days or more, visiting 23 or 24 countries. And we have many other journeys, such as the journey around South America, around Africa, the Indian Ocean, and this year we are the journey going all the way to Australia and New Zealand. Uh, the idea of Air Journey from the beginning is basically to show pilots that the world is limitless when you fly your own airplane. And we've made it as easy as we can. Every one of our journey is led by a pilot, which we call a journey director, and is going to be with you for the duration of the journey. And everything else is pre-arranged from the office where we have two departments. We have the flight department who handle everything related to airplane. And we have the land uh, department which handle everything for the land arrangement, such as hotels, transfer, restaurants, sightseeing, and so on. We minimize the time at the airport and uh, we maximize the time to enjoy the destination. Uh, when I started Air Journey 25 years ago, my wife said it's a great idea, but there's three conditions. We uh, spend at least two nights, better three nights at each destination. We never leave before nine o'clock in the morning. We spend a minimum amount of time at the airport. And we also fly in good weather and never at night. And that has been the motto of Air Journey for all of these years. So, what do we do? It's the three nights at each destination when we can. We use the best available hotel that are at the destination we're going to be visiting. We uh, use local uh, guide uh, going to take us through the uh, off the beaten path destination at each stop. Every one of our dinner is a la carte. There is no set dinner. Uh, we organize private transfer on arrival. We usually have one. <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, one transfer, one car per airplane. Um, and it's a fully guided experience. We also limit our journey to six airplane maximum. Uh, there's no more than that. We limit it with parking, airspace use, and so on. We take care of all the flight planning. And I'm going to go in details on that later on during the presentation, since we have developed our own application to use uh, during the journey. We pay very close attention to the weather. I am proud to say I'm a weather chicken. If the weather is not to my liking, we're not going anywhere. And of course, I mentioned previously, there's no night fly. So it's very important when you come on a journey, uh, there's two aspects. There's the journey director, which is the person or the couple who's going to be flying with you on the journey. It's going to be there for the duration. And we also have all the team in the office separated in two areas, the land arrangement and the flight support. And all of these put together make it um, one of the unique experience you can have while traveling. Our part of your journey will leave Quebec City on June the 4th and will return to the US on June the 25th. 21 days abroad, 22 days, sorry, abroad, 21 night. Uh, we have a pretty exciting itinerary, and the fact that we're flying our own airplane 
that allow us to be flying off the beaten path and um, use facilities or airport that are not usually used for a commercial flight. The length of the journey is going to be 8,300 nautical miles. So for the TBM that give you an idea of how many hours you're going to be flying back and forth, we'll be visiting eight countries in two continents. Let's do a little review of the itinerary. Uh, going to be visiting the countries of Canada on departure, Greenland, Iceland, the Netherlands, uh, the Czech Republic, uh, Italy, Spain, and France before going back to the US. It's going to be a wine at stop in uh, Quebec City, in Kangaroo Swag, Greenland, as well as in Tarbes, the home of the TBM in France. There will be a two night stop in Reykjavik in Iceland on the way over to Europe, and there are going to be three nights at every of the important stops in Europe in Amsterdam, Prague, Lake Como, Menorca, and uh, Normandy. Um, as I mentioned previously, it's a 9 a.m. departure from the hotel, not at the airport, and we minimize the uh, airport um, or the time spent at the airport with everything pre-organized ahead of time. So let's go more in detail into what the itinerary is all about. Uh, going to Europe, I took you Amsterdam as our first destination in mainland Europe. We're going to have 690 nautical miles to Kujuak, where we refuel, then on to Kangalooswak in uh, Greenland, and then off to Reykjavik, and then into Amsterdam. Uh, all of the distance mentioned over here are uh, very easily reached by a TBM, but if we would be facing any headwind, any delay, any restriction on the leg from Reykjavik to Amsterdam, most likely an additional few stop could be organized somewhere in Scotland. So Quebec City, that's already give you a first glance of uh, abroad. Uh, we're staying in um, the French part, the old part at the famous Chateau uh, Frontenac, uh, which oversees the St. Lawrence River, not too far away from the uh, airport and give us a sense of uh, the uh, Europe taste based back in the 17th century when the hotel was built. That's where you would be meeting your fellow participant as well as the journey director and will uh, provide you with a very long but interesting briefing of what to expect on the journey as well as uh, enjoying a drink, meeting your uh, other participant and uh, fantastic uh, dinner in one of the local restaurants. After our stop in um, Kujuak, uh, Greenland, I'm sorry, not Greenland, Quebec, and refuel, then we'll be on our way to Gangaluswak, uh, Greenland. Uh, it's a rather interesting stop. Uh, there's nothing too fancy about the hotel we're staying, which is called the Gangaluswak Hotel. It's at the airport, and the airport was built back in the 40s, uh, as a staging point to move all of the uh, equipment, uh, airplane-wise, from the U.S. for the battlefield in uh, Europe. It's still an 8,000-foot runway, there's radar, and uh, as you can see on the photo here, most of the time you get good weather. Um, there's some fantastic uh, Instagram opportunities of photos with this sign showing up all the different uh, destinations. And there is a couple of restaurants uh, worth to be talked about. There is one at the hotel uh, when uh, open, that's a big question, uh, offers some pretty fantastic local uh, food with the local uh, fish and uh, meat, uh, the fish being the char, uh, which is an exciting cold fish to enjoy. And uh, if open, we can also go to the former radio station, uh, not the airplane radio station, I'm talking music and news, which has now been abandoned, but it turned over to a restaurant facing a lake, which was the source of the, uh, still today, the source of the uh, fresh water for the town of Kangalooswak. Next destination is uh, Iceland, <coughs> with the capital of uh, Reykjavik. We'll be staying at the Art Deco Hotel Borg, downtown Reykjavik. We'll be spending two nights there, uh, with a visit of the uh, Golden uh, Circle route, uh, showing the different uh, rugged uh, place of um, Iceland, also where the two tectonic plates run into one another, the one from uh, North America, the one from uh, Europe. Um, 
exciting place. There is also beautiful uh, golf course. There is a volcano. There is also a geyser. Uh, it's certainly totally different of what we have uh, in Europe or in the uh, U.S. And Reykjavik become a fantastic place for uh, food. There's a scene there, amazing, uh, with chefs from different parts of the world, as well as Reykjavik, um, an Icelandic chef, uh, showing off fantastic uh, experience. And of course, a stop in Reykjavik cannot be complete without a visit to uh, one of the uh, lagoon, the Blue Lagoon, or in this case, the Sky Lagoon, will give you uh, a view of a um, natural uh, hot tub enjoying the uh, surrounding area. Then from there, we're going to be aiming towards Amsterdam in uh, Netherlands, uh, capital, a little bit like the Venice of the North. Uh, we'll be staying at a beautiful hotel called Hotel de Euro Europe, right there on the canal, and uh, we'll be embarking on local exploration with the Royal Palace, the Rembrandt House, uh, the uh, unique uh, museum with uh, Van Gogh uh, uh, artifacts, as well as the Anne Frank House. Uh, of course, you don't go to Amsterdam without doing a cruise on the canal, and uh, we give you a full day so you can explore on your own, and also enjoy, if you want, some of the bicycling uh, paths that they're offering throughout the city. <clears throat> then after Amsterdam, that close our crossing of the Atlantic, we are on our way to visit the rest of Europe. As you can see on the map, the distance we're going to be flying is pretty short. Um, Amsterdam to Prague, 380, and then on to Milan, Italy, 345, down to Menorca in the Balearic Island, 405, then Tarbes, uh, and then finishing the tour of Europe in Normandy, not far away from the uh, D-Day. Uh, which is where um, all of the start of the liberation of Europe took place. So in Prague, uh, a very unique, beautiful city. We're going to be staying in the old part uh, at the foot of the cathedral at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. And most of the discovery will be doing by foot. We'll be crossing the famous uh, bridge. We'll be visiting uh, the castle and see the crown jewels, uh, the relic also of Saint Venetia. Uh, an amazing place, um, good food uh, experience, and um, uh, amazing discovery of the different uh, part of his uh, old city, was pretty much been saved during the uh, Second World War, not to uh, damage. Then after uh, Prague, we'll be launching south towards Milan, Italy, and um, moving by land, car basically what I'm saying, so 45 minutes drive to be staying again at the Mada Oriental on the Lake Como. Um, relaxing place, we'll do a guided tour, uh, intimate of the, um, of the city. Uh, there's going to be some uh, relaxing time, uh, three days to explore and be to all of these nice boutiques with um, the Italian uh, goods. Uh, enjoyable and for the pilot in ours, we have a connection with the local flying club, which is well known in Europe because of their um, seaplane base. And uh, we could organize on the side a seaplane a tour and be able to uh, uh, see this part of the world from a little uh, higher. After Lake Como, we're going to leave Italy to go on to Spain, but a very unknown part of Spain, the Balearic Island, which are known for uh, Ibiza, party place, Mallorca, who's been there for a number of years, and Menorca, which is a smaller of the three islands, uh, has been out of the uh, beaten path for the last um, you know, few years, starting to do a, a comeback or a show on the marketplace. Um, I am very fortunate of having a house in uh, Menorca, and I'll be more than happy to host you uh, for a party at our home. Um, the place you're going to be staying there is a uh, called uh, Toral Bank, uh, very unique. It's inland, not far away from the seaside, but it's also a winery uh, and they have their own wines so of its degustation to enjoy and, and so on. And a number of um, tour to the capital, Mahon, the second place, Ciutadella, and we also organize a cruise along uh, the south coast or the north coast of the island based on the web. After we leave, um, Menorca, a short flight to uh, Tarbes in France, 
that's where you have the birthplace of your TBM. Uh, there is going to be hosting a reception. Take a very good care of us. We'll have plenty of time to visit the factory and see how the plane was built. And then um, a night uh, downtown uh, of that uh, unique place of uh, TAR. After we leave uh, TAR, as you can see over here, Rex Hotel is going to be our place to uh, enjoy. Just one night. Then uh, we're on our way to Normandy. Another unique experience there would we'll be staying in a private chateau. It is not a hotel. It's a private chateau called Chateau de Canisy, who has been in the same family since the 1200. The Count of Kergolay uh, is, um, is home uh, and he's going to be lecturing us to the uh, distant history, to the present history, also to the history during the Second World War. And we'll have a exploration not only of um, the surrounding area but also uh, the uh, museum dedicated to uh, uh, all of the happening during the second world war very very interesting uh, place and we'll uh, spend the appropriate time at the uh, american uh, cemetery there um, why this hotel well we usually try to get hotel out of the ordinary we don't like uh, the big chain hotel, the large hotel, and so on. So over the years, we've developed a taste uh, for this unique uh, place, but also the brand. So in this particular uh, journey, Mandarin Oriental is certainly uh, the chain we're going to be using the most. But we also do private estate, uh, like the Chateau in France. We do the winery, Torrelbeck, and the Grand Dame of Amsterdam with Hotel de l'Europe without forgetting, of course, Chateau Fontenac in Quebec City. What we like on our journey is the group dynamic. So most of the time, it's going to be husband and wife flying the plane, but we always welcome family members or friends or guests. Maybe not for the crossing of the Atlantic, that doesn't bring much unless your friend is a pilot and two of you can keep an eye on what's happening. But if you have family who want to join part of the journey in Europe, uh, let us know, we'll be happy to make the arrangement and of course, um, adjust the price based on the journey they're going to be joining us. The concept of uh, changing the dynamic is making it more, more attractive and everyone has to bring his own uh, uh, concept and his own advantage. Luggage and packing, that's always a very interesting part of our journey. We're going to be going through different kind of weather, uh, cold weather, warm weather, we're going to be swimming in the med, so it's always um, interesting to uh, stage uh, the packing for the uh, easy travel. Have your luggage on wheel, because uh, most of the time on the tarmac, you're going to have to pull your uh, luggage. Don't take too much, because the properties we're going to offer laundry service. Um, and we're also going to be providing you with a luggage tag, uh, so uh, each of the luggage belonging to you will be identified. On this luggage tag, we also have the tail number of the airplane, which help, the, help, which help the people at the airport to position the luggage to the right um, airplane. As I mentioned previously, the temperature during our journey is going to be hovering uh, between the 70s all the, way, all the way up to the 80s, middle 80s, and as low as the 50 when we go to uh, Greenland and part of Iceland. Credit card and cash are well uh, used, of course, in Europe, more and more credit card than cash. Uh, keep in mind that you cannot carry more than $10,000 cash with you. You don't need that much money, but you do need a little bit uh, for tips and so on. What we do on the credit card is advise you to take a debit card or um, an ATM card so you can collect local currency, which would be uh, useful in um, Canada as well in Iceland and the rest of Europe is going to be using uh, Euro. Whatever you, you take from the uh, ATM machine, you can always use the excess to settle the bill at the uh, last hotel. You're going to be staying at part of the fees. Uh, we pay very close attention to the flying and the safety. And leaving the US, you're going to be exposed to a different kind of environment. Uh, and uh, while the rules are the same around the world, uh, it's not exactly the same. So um, altimeter setting during our journey will switch from what we have here in the US to a mini bar uh, and the 29.92 inches become 10.30 mini bar in Europe. The transition level, transition altitude in Europe 
vary per airport. So in the US, very simple, it's a flight level uh, 180 at 18,000 feet. In Europe, every airport has their own set of altitude or level, and you will find that information on the approach plate. And we do provide a briefing before every leg of the journey, so we'll remind you and we'll go over uh, all of that. The other big difference in Europe is that you cannot crank the engine before you've received a startup clearance. So we always need to be on the radio and call them to ask, up, ask them if we can have the startup clearance. And so the, the reason they do that, if there's any kind of delay provided by ATC or other reason, they don't want to have an airplane with the engine running and blowing air and making noise all over the place. The other thing too during the crossing of the Atlantic, we're going to have to do a position report. So we're going to go over with you at the brief uh, how a position report is made, what are the important uh, elements, and we give you chit chat um, a piece of paper so you can prepare yourself and uh, basically be heard on the radio as a professional who's done that all of his flying uh, life. Uh, when we cross the Atlantic, there is no set waypoint. Uh, we decide. Uh, when we find the flight plan, uh, where we're going to be reporting, and we create our own waypoint on the flight plan, this waypoint will need to be created in the uh, G1000 or G3000, and we're going to go over the GPS, and we're going to go over that uh, with you. Uh, in regard of the uh, requirement for any specific LOA, the route of flight we're taking going over and coming back is uh, known as the Blue Spruce uh, route. Uh, and you will be limited uh, to flight level 280. If you want to go higher, you will need to get a specific LOA, which is pretty complicated to have, and we don't think worth it for the additional 3,000 feet. Uh, and on other end, you can always uh, request <coughs> 310, <coughs> excuse me, especially that the whole route now is uh, covered by ADSB. In regard of the ATC communication, it's going to be English all the way over and back, uh, but there's going to be some local uh, uh, slang. Uh, there's going to be some local uh, accent. You're getting used with mine, by the way. Uh, so uh, you have to be precise in your communication. Uh, you don't have to use any US uh, slang. Uh, Europe, as soon as we start in Greenland, they don't use TBM 1234 Charlie, it's going to be November 1234 Charlie. The letter in November need to be mentioned in every communication because that's how we're going to identify that the plane is not based anywhere in uh, Europe. And uh, we provide you in our briefing with uh, the details of the next flight plan and the route expected to be filed. So while in flight, you can prepare the next uh, flight plan. As mentioned previously, we go over the, the different things on safety, whether night operation, we don't. Uh, we keep an eye on the world situation. If there's anything funny going on in one place, uh, i.e. in Europe, maybe we went up the ATC strike uh, or delay, we're going to adjust the journey based on that. Uh, in Europe, we're going also to uh, be paying attention to separation uh, between the takeoff time. So we try to keep that about 10 minutes uh, apart. Uh, in regard of the fuel, we will be organizing all the fuel release ahead of time for you. Uh, so it will be everything will be there with pre-negotiated price. Keep in mind too that there is no pre-mixed in Europe, so we will have to carry your own priest and do the uh, fueling at every uh, every place. Um, Connex weather: if you are equipped uh, with the G3000, 1600, and so on, and if you have the GSR56 you will be able to get spot weather report. It will give you TAF, METAR, uh, as well as wind aloft and so on. Uh, so that's pretty uh, pretty interesting to uh, get access to. If you need more detail on the equipment requirement, feel free to give us a call and we'll be happy to explain that to you. Uh, we also, during COVID, had plenty of time to create what we call our Air Journey app. Uh, it's basically an app you will be downloading on your iPad and your iPhone. And uh, uh, they will, we will be able to push to uh, your equipment, iPad, iPhone, uh, the uh, important information for the journey. 
It's not like in the past where you had to download them through email and then upload them to a folder on the iPad. We create all of that for you and we push the information in there. The only requirement is that you are connected to the internet so the connection can happen. Uh, what we have in the Air Journey app is most of the information you need for the journey. Uh, and we've created a whole bunch of folders. As we can see over here, the folder you're going to have are going to be uh, the, the flight uh, uh, schedule uh, for the duration of the journey, the flight briefing, the four, the four flight link, and that only works with four flight, not with the uh, Garmin application. We're also going to have a copy of all the IKEA flight plan we're finding on your behalf. Uh, there's going to be a jet fuel conversion flight because Europe uses liters and not gallon. We also use pounds, so we'll show that over to you. Uh, there's also uh, the gen deck, you know, still uh, required. We do send them to the different place needed them, but at least we have a copy for you in that application. And we also have the plain document, which will be what we're going to be asking you for, uh, pilot license, medical, airworthiness certificate, uh, registration, insurance, etc., etc. So that application will cover everything. And we're also going to load there the uh, EAPs document we're going to be doing on your behalf for leaving the US to Canada and coming back from Canada to the US. Um, in regard of the chart data, you're going to be, of course, using more than what you used to in the US. So the required area would be Eastern Canada, Atlantic Europe, and um, Eastern Europe, since we're going close to the uh, border, I mean, not the border, we're going to uh, Prague. So we'll go over there. That's for the chart. And then on the nav data, uh, there's different uh, options there. There's the uh, nav data worldwide with sub-region, or we can get the full worldwide. We've negotiated a special price with um, Jepson. So during the duration of the, the res reservation process and so on, we'll ask you um, uh, basically account number and we'll secure all of that for you and make them available ahead of the journey. I'm going to have a short presentation here on what the flight briefing is all about. But for every leg of the journey, there will be a, a, a pretty detailed flight briefing of what to expect uh, for the next uh, leg. And usually, uh, flight briefing will uh, be done on iPad. Sorry, it not, doesn't work on one of his Android systems yet. Uh, and we're going to be discussing and viewing the route. Uh, with what to expect on departure, what to expect on route, what to expect on arrival. We study the different approaches and most likely the one going to be using, uh, as well as any different ground process that you might have over there, which are new to us uh, in the US. And then we go over the weather forecast, TAF, METAR, departure, arrival, any kind of NOTAMs, uh, what to expect uh, on the satellite as well as uh, on the radar. Again, we're very weather conscientious and we pay very close attention to that. Survival equipment, you're flying a single engine across the Atlantic. And so requirements are that you need to have a live vest per person, a raft certified for crossing the Atlantic, and a Gumby suit known as the immersion suit. And plus that's separate, not required, but uh, highly advised, an EPIRB or a tracking device or set phone. Uh, the life raft, the live vest and the Gumby suit can be rented by Air Journey. So if you don't have any, any one of these things, let us know and we'll share with you the uh, cost and the contract to be able to take them along with you. Um, here, putting a little bit of time of the uh, VHF handle, as I mentioned previously, uh, every flight in Europe will require a startup clearance. And instead of being inside a cockpit uh, using the ship battery, uh, you might want to be outside and using a handheld to uh, request the startup. And if there's any kind of hold, you're not draining the battery of the plane, you drain the battery of the handheld uh, unit you have there. When you uh, use the handheld or buy the handheld, if you don't have one, make sure of two things. That you have the 5 megahertz one. This is a strong signal because uh, if you take the, any one of the other, it might not be strong enough to transmit directly to the tower. And make sure also that whatever you choose, as a capability of either a charge 240 uh, volt, because that's what the Europe uh, power is all about. And some of them do offer a battery uh, version, a little attachment battery-wise, so you don't have to worry about blowing up your uh, charger 
if you plug it in the wrong um, voltage. We also usually use a Garmin uh, Enrich. Uh, this is a nice way if you don't have connects on the plane to basically let your uh, family, let your partners know where you are, what time you take off, what time you land. And that also can be used as a send and receive custom message. And so on. it's very useful. We use a Enrich on any one of our journey. Europe is slightly different than in the US. The crew need to stay with the plane and oversee the fueling of the plane. And in our case, we're going to have to have to add priests. Some of the fueler in Europe don't even want to touch it. So you might be the one sitting next to him or standing next to him and dispersing the priest that needed for the tank. Remember that one of these high pressure can uh, do between 100 and 150 gallon per, per can. Um, so, um, you know, prepare the appropriate number of can you might need on the journey. As I mentioned before, we do the fuel release uh, for you. Uh, so we make sure you have a fuel card before we, we leave. And that's all set up the automatic payment and so on and make life a lot, uh, a lot easier along the way. Uh, airplane fees in Europe are different than in the US. There's no exactly FBO like what we used to. So the fuel will be handled by the fueler, which can be one of the large companies so, such as Shell, uh, Total, Total, and uh, then they only collect the amount of money for the fuel. So you might see often uh, a gallon of fuel less expensive in Europe than what you have in the US. But what you don't know is that the FBO of the handler <clears throat> is going to have his own fee, which will be paid separately. And that would be for handling, custom, immigration, landing, parking. And then as we return, uh, there's going to be some fees for overflight, landing fees, as well as the use of the airways in Europe. It's not free like we have in the US as to be paid uh, over there. Uh, middle of payment, uh, the easiest way we find out is that prior to the journey, we'll ask you to uh, send us a certain amount that we're going to keep here on your behalf at our journey. And uh, we will be the one paying the bills along the way with all the proof of payment, with all the copies of the invoice and so on. That will make it life a lot easier. You don't have to get stressed with that. And that will facilitate and expedite the time at the airport on departure. Um, aircraft insurance for Europe <clears throat> is a big question. In the US, you've seen the uh, insurance market has contracted. And it's pretty tough to get more than uh, one to five million insurance for the plane, liability insurance for the plane. Europe um, doesn't care. They tell you what their need is based on the weight of the airplane. So for Europe, a TBM will need between 10 million, 11 million for the third party liability. And for every seat occupying the plane, you need an additional 256 SDR, which is equivalent uh, the last time we checked about $340,000. So 11 million should be plenty enough to be covered. If you can't get it for XYZ reason, we find a way to uh, offer our own liability insurance uh, for the duration of the journey, uh, just uh, by joining the Air Journey Club, which offer an umbrella uh, excess liability insurance. And for your journey, that cost is about $3,500. Uh, so it's, it is an interesting thing, but you do need to get the primary uh, excess liability of $4 million with your insurance. And you also need to make sure that uh, Europe is part of the coverage of the territory of your policy. Uh, if you want peace of mind, we also have our own department offering uh, travel uh, cancellation insurance and medical insurance. Um, it is uh, done through uh, AIG, known on their brand Travel Guard. Again, one of the uh, person here on the team is the expert on cancellation insurance. Feel free to call the office and get a quote on what you would like to cover. And that brings us to the end of our session. So I am open to question and answer, which hopefully you have added to our uh, question and answer paragraph here in the uh, journey. So uh, let's see. Ah, we have a question over here. Does the Gumby suit need to be wear uh, during the flight? Uh, the answer is no. It's, it's up to you. Uh, it's pretty bulky to put on, so it's not easy in the confinement of uh, the TBM. 
usually what I do is uh, just put the uh, two leg into uh, the Gumby suit, but I keep the torso and everything else uh, open. You can also decide that uh, if anything should happen, you can uh, step back in the back of the plane and uh, set up your own, um, you know, the, the Gumby at that time. So a couple of uh, questions. Uh, type of airport we use in Europe um, depend the place we we go to. Uh, we usually uh, have the one which are general aviation friendly, uh, with dedicated parking, uh, with um, security, uh, fence, and and so on. So it varies at every uh, every stop, but yes, uh, it's uh, usually in the dedicated part of the airport for general aviation. Journey director, how qualified he is. In the case of his journey, our journey director is a French gentleman by the name of Christophe. Uh, he's an instructor of the TBM in Europe. Uh, he's well known by the, the factory and um, he's going to be the one flying uh, on one of the airplanes to and from uh, Europe and be able to keep an hand on, the, on you. Are upgrades available at the hotel? Yes, if you decide to, um, um, that the regular room or deluxe room that we uh, include in our program uh, is not um, to your standard, we'll be happy to give you a quote per hotel uh, if you want to upgrade to a junior suite or a regular uh, suite. Is there any diet um, consideration? Yes, again, that's very important. The journey is done for your comfort. Uh, we want you to be there. We want you to enjoy the journey. Any diet requirement you have, let us know and uh, We'll communicate with the hotel and make sure that everything is respected. Well, no more questions. Thank you very much for attending the webinar. Uh, a recording has taken place and I'll make it available to each one of you at the end of the, um, the day today, or most likely tomorrow. Thank you very much for your attendance. Have a great day.